IT consulting services. We were recently recognized by Microsoft with the prestigious Cloud Partner of the Year for the West Coast, and we have helped hundreds of organizations, both small and large, to realize and take advantage of what cloud computing has to offer. We're really excited about both Windows 8 and Office 365, and we think that after today's demo, you will be too. Before we get started, I want to take a moment and point out the live chat feature available through Link. Please feel free to leave any questions that you may have in the live chat, and one of our experts will answer it as quickly as possible. You can also email us at info at infiniteconsulting.com with any questions you may have. In addition, we may use some of the questions and answer them at the end of the demo, so please do take advantage of the live chat. Okay, why don't we get started? I'd like to introduce you to Jade Holmes, Technical Account Manager, and Chris McFarland, Technical Support Specialist for Infinite Consulting. These two both have particular expertise and passion for cloud services, strategic planning, and in creating measurable productivity gains for Infinite's customers. Today's presentation is going to focus on the growing needs of businesses, both small and large. Businesses that we talk to describe needing to have the ability to balance work and life, to work smarter, to stay in control, and be connected everywhere with any device they have, to have great security, and really above all, to have technology that just works. Windows 8 and Office 365 deliver on all of this. So with that, I'd like to hand it over to Chris to talk to you about Windows 8. Chris? Hi, Mike. Thanks. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, like I said, or Mike said, uh, my name is Chris McFarland. Um, I'll be talking to you today briefly about Windows 8, and uh, we'll go ahead and pass off to Jay, who's going to talk to you guys about Office 365. Um, so I guess to get started, if you haven't had a chance to uh, to uh, really get your hands on Windows 8, we'll do some brief overview about what's new about Windows 8 and kind of how it can help you in a business world. Um, Windows 8 is kind of completely redesigned in a visual format from Windows, uh, the previous Windows version. So uh, we'll kind of take a look at that, as well as some of the new security features that it has to offer. Um, with Windows 8, you're going to have access to what they call now their, their uh, tile system. Um, it's, it's basically your, your brand new start screen, rather than the uh, old Windows uh, format where you would have the start button down on the bottom left. Now you've got a start screen. So to get started on that. When uh, Microsoft designed Windows 8, their main concern was how it's connected, how it's uh, with all the new technologies that are coming out. So with, uh, with Windows 8, you're going to have access to uh, files with real-time live feed. And what that's going to do is on your start screen, you're going to have access to see if you have new mail messages, uh, new incoming voice messages, new uh, IM messages. And that's all going to be updated from your screen. So you really don't have to open up those applications to, to look at that. Um, Staying connected, uh, again, we have the improved uh, VPN with Windows 8. So as tablets become more and more um, accessible and, and important in the work world, um, this new Windows 8 VPN actually now extends to tablets. So when you have many workers that are working on computers at work but then go home, um, now you have access to your documents on your work computer from your tablet. You can connect that VPN straight to your tablet on, uh, on the Windows 8 platform and, and vice versa. Um, the new Wi-Fi feature within uh, Windows 8 is fantastic. Um, they've taken steps to improve Wi-Fi. Not only do you have a new Wi-Fi interface within, within Windows 8, which we'll also go ahead and take a look at later, but uh, the new interface allows you to connect on boot up. So previously, when you're, when you're booting up your old uh, Windows machines, once you get booted up, you get onto the desktop, your, your Wi-Fi then starts to connect. So you have that downtime of, of really where you're not connected to the Internet. Um, with Windows 8, that Wi-Fi connection is happening as soon as you're starting you're starting at the computer. So by the time you get to your desktop, you're already connected to the Internet. Um, another great feature of staying connected with, uh, with Windows 8 is the mobile broadband app. And uh, I personally don't use the mobile broadband app um, because I'm, I'm in a, in a Wi-Fi environment. But with the mobile broadband app, what that allows you to do is connect to the Internet, and you're going to have a live tile that shows you your usage. And that's really important because, you know, you're paying – you're paying for your data usage with uh, mobile broadband, such as like a MyFi card. And this app is going to tell you how much uh, how much data you're using. And it's also going to limit any kind of large downloads. So you're not going to have Windows Update coming through. It's going to, it's going to stop all that, and you're going to have to approve any kind of downloads that come through. So you're not, you're not using up all your extra data that's on your MyFi or your other uh, mobile, mobile Wi-Fi card. 
that's a really great feature. And that's something that we've seen a lot from from mobile users. Um, Windows 8 Remote Desktop is another uh, another improved version of of the Windows 7 Remote Desktop. And this Remote Desktop now accesses um, all your Windows 8 devices. So you can actually remote desktop into a tablet um, from a PC or vice versa. And this is again, this is great, um, just like the VPN client. Um, and now it allows you to connect from multiple devices and get all your stuff on one page. The next thing that Microsoft thought about is how do we keep your information secure? Um, as as we have mobile users becoming more and more a part of the workforce, um, security is huge on that because you have now you have computers that are you know in and out of a work environment, and uh, you know keeping security is is one of the top concerns with, with companies. And there's there's kind of a couple ways that Windows 8 has stepped into that and really said, you know, this is how we plan on improving, and this is how we're going to step into the next generation. One of those is uh, a trusted boot. So trusted boot is something that comes with Windows 8, um, and it's an extension of your BIOS. It really replaces the old BIOS on the uh, in, in the traditional machine, and what that does is through their UEFI, um, the trusted boot checks your signatures on Windows 8 against the list of known signatures. So then we can, when you have malware, um, malware, can what, what it can do is go ahead and install things that boot with your OS. So by the time your OS is booted and you have your uh, antivirus, that, that malware has already booted, so your antivirus isn't going to pick it up. But with Windows 8 Trusted Boot, it checks all those signatures, and if there's a signature that doesn't match up, um, it's not going to let your not going to let your computer boot. It's going to tell you to go ahead and contact your um, IT administrator to go ahead and fix that problem for you. Now, if you have Windows 8 installed already and you haven't enabled Trusted Boot through uh, UEFI. You're going to have to go ahead and reinstall Windows 8. But generally, the majority of the out-of-the-box Windows 8 installations are going to have UEFI already uh, installed on that. Another great security improvement with Windows 8 is the new BitLocker technology. And where BitLocker, if you're familiar with it from Windows 7, was available in the enterprise modes, um, the enterprise versions of Windows 7, now it's available in pro versions of Windows 8 as well. And they've improved that in a number of ways. Um, Another one of the biggest ways that they've improved BitLocker is now you have the ability to not only BitLock an entire drive, but if you're in a rush, you can actually just BitLock the information that's on the drive itself. Um, if any of you have used BitLocker in the past, you know that when using BitLocker, if you encrypt an entire drive, it can take up to 20 minutes. Um, a lot of a lot of users don't have time for that um, as, as in, in a workload environment. So with this new BitLocker, if you if you have an 8 gig drive but you're only using 500 megabytes, you choose to just BitLock the information that's on it, and that's done in just a few seconds. Um, then as you add additional information onto that drive, it's going to BitLock each piece of that information. It's a great great new feature. Another way of uh, you know that they've chosen to you know kind of introduce security is um, through IE10. So IE10, uh, some of you might be using it now. Um, now you have the ability within Windows 8 to not only run IE10 from uh, from your desktop, your normal desktop, which I'll I'll show you in just a bit, um, but you also have the ability to run it through their uh, new graphical interface, the new Start screen. Um, there's lots of new security features with IE10 that have kind of uh, come in hand in hand with uh, with Windows 8. So another goal with uh, with Windows 8 was kind of to try and simplify IT for for the average user. Um, again, with all these new introductions of this new, you know, new security information and new security software, um, simplifying IT was was definitely something that Microsoft had in its uh, in its goal for launching Windows 8. Um, one one of those features is going to be your domain join. Um, domain join retains the same function as Windows 7 domain join with quicker speed, so you don't have this this large uh, gap of wait time as you're uh, joining new devices. It also allows you to join tablets to your domain now. So if you're working on a tablet at work, you can actually go ahead and join that as part of your work domain, which makes you know controlling your devices much easier within the work environment. Um, another really great feature is the factory reset and refresh. Um, previously, when, when computers have been slow and sluggish, sometimes you actually have problems with your Windows sys files. 
with uh, with Windows 7, you would have to have someone who knew pretty much, you know, a, a good amount about IT to go ahead and, and, and refresh your sys files and refresh the actual system to get it up and running, you know, the way it should be again. But with Windows 8, you actually have that option right within your PC setup. Um, you have the option to, for a factory reset, which is actually going to bring your device, whether it's a tablet or a laptop, right back to the way you got it out of the box. Or you have refresh, which is an awesome option if you're looking to, you know, save the files and you don't want the computer itself to change, but you'd like to go ahead and refresh those, those Windows files, you have the option to go ahead and click and uh, refresh your Windows files, which is going to speed up your performance and, and, and fix any issues that you're going to, you, you, that you might have with your OS. Um, now, this is something that Windows and Microsoft together have kind of made really simple for the average user to go ahead and do. Um, <clears throat> as far as Windows 8, the actual platform of the OS, it's actually built on a lot of the same principles as the Windows 7 platform. It's just better, stronger, faster, and more secure. Um, some of the biggest things that you've heard from, from some of the users that, you know, who possibly have looked at Windows 8 and said, you know, it's not for me, is, you know, they don't like the new start menu. And uh, if you remember back to Windows 95, um, when the start button was first introduced, you had a lot of the people saying the exact same thing. You know, they, they, there was this new start button, and, and what do we do with the start button? We don't like it. It's different. It's new. But as we uh, learned, learned the new platform, starting with Windows 95, we, we learned to love it, and we learned to operate with it. And that's kind of how Microsoft sees uh, Windows 8. It speeds up, uh, speeds up your production, and, and once you learn to uh, use it, which only takes, uh, I would say, 30 minutes or so to really get comfortable with it, it's actually a lot faster than the old platform. Let's go ahead and <clears throat> continue on. So why switch to uh, why switch to Windows 8 from Windows 7? You know, it, I know Windows 7. I know it works great. It's in my, you know, it's my company uses Windows 7. Why would I make that jump? I'll go ahead and switch this slide over for you. There we go. So because Windows 8 is built on the Windows 7 platform, you're going to have a lot of what you know and love. But with Windows 8, you're going to have faster boot times. And and I really, I, I employ you to... Uh, you know, go ahead and, and, and look at a Windows 8 device and, and shut it down and boot it up, and you're going to see the boot times are, are cut in half. Um, you've got when you sleep, your machine goes to sleep um, right away, and when you start your machine back up, it's going to boot at the same speed as your phone. I mean, it really just comes straight up, and uh, it's a very fast booting device. Um, with Windows 8, you're going to have longer battery life because the actual OS itself doesn't use the same resources um, at the same the resources are used a lot less with Windows 8. So you have battery life, you have laptops lasting all day long. I know with my personal laptop, um, running Windows 7, towards the end of the day, towards the end of the workday, I'd have to go ahead and plug that in if I wanted to uh, keep working. With Windows 8, I can literally use my computer from the time that, you know, I get up in the morning to uh, when I'm done with work at the end of the day. My battery lasts the entire time. Um, with Windows 8, again, you know, with, with the new security features, the trusted boot, um, You've got a more secure platform that you're not worried about so much of the malware um, issues that are out there on the web today. And as they grow, um, because of this signature uh, UEFI, you're not worried about, you know, compromising your system. The faster Wi-Fi connection, is uh, again, is really going to allow you to uh, connect to the Internet and be, be productive straight from when you get the uh, computer booted up. Uh, multiple, mon multiple monitor improvements, I'll go ahead and show you. In just a second with our demo, and it really it speeds up, uh, you know, presentations and having access to multiple monitors. So, I mean, there's, there's lots of great reasons where uh, Windows 8 is actually better in a workable environment, lots of great features. And uh, a little bit later at, at the end of our demo, if you have any further questions on that, I'll be happy to answer them for you. And then lastly, um, Windows 8 is also available through a number of uh, Microsoft professional grade offices. So Windows and Tune is a great um, a great management PC management feature that can allow you to manage your uh, all the devices within your environment, control uh, what updates those are getting, and uh, and and all the uh, different 
issues that might come up um, with, within a uh, environment with Windows and Tune, you're actually going to have access to uh, each license of Windows and Tune is going to have access to uh, Windows 8 Enterprise. Uh, Enterprise is also going to have additional features on top of Windows 8 Pro, such as Hyper-V uh, virtual virtual machine uh, capability, as well as um, some of the other large virtual machine um, monitoring programs that come with Windows 8 Enterprise. And Windows 8 is offered through Windows and Tune, as well as uh, volume licensing, which is a great option for multi multiple upgrades to uh, Windows 8. So we'll go ahead and cut over to uh, the demo. I can show you a little bit more about uh, Windows 8 in person. So starting at the start screen. So this is our this is our Windows 8 start screen. Just like the start button, except everything now is in a tile format. Um, I, I've been able to organize my applications where I have my main applications, which is my desktop, my mail, my weather. I also have these uh, <coughs> these groups which I've created, my work apps. I've got access to my Outlook, my Link, and all my office uh, all office features that I need. I have utility apps that I've organized, entertainment. I can have Wikipedia and uh, music as well as uh, news. And so it allows you to really custom custom set that um, that start page. And also um, for companies where Necessarily, you don't want your employees to have access to um, all the things on start screen, such as applications or games. You can actually limit that as well within a, within a work environment. I'll go ahead and show you multiple monitor support. Now, this is a really cool trick, and it's, uh, it makes having multiple monitors really easily. So you're going to go over here. You're going to slide down. There we go. And I can actually look at devices right here. Now, this is just, I just brought my mouse down, and when I slide it, it brings this up. Now I can click second screen. This is actually going to allow me to choose what I want to do with my multiple monitor. Um, so I can choose to extend the display, duplicate the display, and previously with, uh, you know, with uh, previous versions of Windows, you don't have that option. You're going to have to go into your properties, and you're going to have to know how to use your, uh, use your, your, your video card to really Utilize the multiple monitor support with Windows 8. It's made it really, uh, really fast and quick. Um, I'm going to show you real quick the uh, refresh or reset version. You can actually get to uh, you just go to your settings and you go to change PC settings in general. Now, under general, you have refresh your PC without affecting your files. So this is this is the option where I was talking about where if you want to keep all your files and, and, and you want to keep things as they are, but you want Windows to you know, reset all those sys files and, and operate um, the way it was when you first got it. You can choose to just go ahead and get started with uh, refreshing your system, or you have the ability to uh, reset, and that's going to make your computer the way it was when you got it out of the box. I'll go ahead and show you the BitLocker function, which is a great new uh, great new improvement to BitLocker. So previously, as I said, you'd have to go ahead and encrypt that entire drive. But here I can just go right click. This is a uh, just a little flash drive that I have plugged into uh, my computer. Go ahead and get BitLocker started. I can choose to enter a password. And I can save that password to a file. So I'll go ahead and just stick that on my desktop. So here's where you have the option to encrypt the entire drive, which uh, can take some time. And this is a great option if you, you want to encrypt the entire drive because you really have a full drive. Um, or you have the option to just um, encrypt the space that's being used. Go ahead and start encryption. And while that's going in the background, I'll go ahead and show you the new task manager with Windows 8. Windows 8 has uh, improved the well-known task manager um, that Windows has been using previously. Now you have access to a lot more depth of information. You have uh, CPU memory as, as before, uh, but when you click over performance, you actually have the ability to monitor, monitor your uh, Wi-Fi connection, um, the, disk, the disks that are being utilized, as well as your CPU. You have app history. So app history is actually going to show you uh, which apps are being used and, and, and if there's ones that are currently in, in progress that are taking up uh, some of your, some of your uh, memory up there. And it's just a more in-depth task manager. It really allows you to see, you know, how is your system working and, uh, you know, where you can make improvements. 
And uh, just by showing you that, it looks like our BitLocker is already finished encrypting. Now it's a complete uh, encrypted, encrypted drive. Anytime I plug it in, I'm going to go have to, I'm going to have, have to enter that password in to access my information. And as information gets put onto that new drive, um, it's going to be encrypted with BitLocker as well. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you is just a quick look into the App Store. Now, again, you can choose to limit the access um, to the App Store um, for your employees if you don't want them to have access to that kind of stuff. Um, but there's actually great stuff in the App Store besides just games and, and uh, you know, a lot of the other stuff, uh, entertainment stuff. You actually have access to Let's go ahead and scroll over and find it over here. Uh, productivity apps. And productivity apps are great. Um, productivity apps, you actually have access to go ahead and download um, things that are going to allow you to track, um, track, you know, such things as like finances or or um, calculators or, or new new ways to, uh, you know, kind of manage your information. There's a lot of great tools in here that I actually use myself um, in a work world. Um, some of them cost money, um, as they're from you know accredited companies, and other of them, you know, other apps out there are also free. But these are actually uh, great working apps, and uh, the uh, store is always growing with that as, uh, as time goes on. So that pretty much sums up my demo. Um, we'll go ahead and go back to the desktop, and then we'll show you. There we go. And lastly, at the end of my demo, I just want to let you know that we are actually extending off of the uh, Windows Intune case test. So if you, if you have interest in Windows and Tune, um, you can now try it out uh, completely free for 180 days. That's going to allow you to see how Windows and Tune operates within your environment, uh, PC management, Windows updates. Um, it's going to give you a clear eye into each one of your individual machines. And uh, if you have interest in, in, in being part of our case test offer and having access to uh, Windows and Tune um, for free to test it out, you can go ahead and email us or contact us at info at infiniteconsulting.com. And uh, we'll go ahead and give you information on that to get you started. So on that note, I'm going to go ahead and hand this over to uh, Jade Holmes. He's going to be um, talking to you a little bit about uh, Office 365. Jade? Thank you, Chris. I'm going to go ahead and uh, share out my screen here. Let's see here. Keep going. All right. Excellent. Okay, so what I'm going to be talking to you about is uh, Microsoft Office 365. Uh, that's pretty much where we're starting here. And uh, really what's going to come with that as a service. So uh, as you see here, you got some things listed below here. Uh, link online, SharePoint online, and Exchange online. Uh, just at the base level of service with Microsoft Office 365, you're going to have Exchange online. Uh, and then you can build on that to, to include services such as SharePoint Online, Link, and Office Professional Plus. Um, so we'll go ahead and dive into these a little bit more in depth in the demo, uh, but let's uh, just kind of start diving in here. So really, uh, O365 is kind of looked at as the future of productivity uh, because it, it's allowing all of these suites to come underneath uh, one banner uh, it, it, in, a, uh, in a monthly subscription. Um, they're really looking at this to be the future of productivity just because it gives you such a rich content against phone, web, and desktop. So, uh, you know, just your ability to have your same information in, in all three locations and, and making a change in one location and have that synchronized levels. Uh, cloud on your terms, um, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can work with this as a service. Um, with regards to, you know, your data, and, and how you're going to have that interact with the cloud. So you have the option to, if you want to move to Office 365, have it, you know, start off in your location using your your licensing and, and uh, you know, on-site servers, as well as connecting that so you have kind of a hybrid configuration between the two or moving all your data to the cloud. So Exchange Online is going to give you all the same functionalities that you have in, in Exchange Server 2010 on, on premises today. Um, this is going to allow you to have Outlook Anywhere access. So you know, you know, connecting your your phones 
directly to the Exchange Environment uh, Outlook on your laptop, maybe on a home desktop, and have the same kind of, uh, you know, performance or anything you would expect inside of an on-premises environment. Uh, just we, you know, if you're running Exchange in-house today, just because it's just because it's in the cloud doesn't mean that that uh, that touch or feel is going to be any different. Uh, you know, some of the things you're going to gain from that is the protection and compliance of, of having your, your your data now stored rather than, you know, in your closet where somebody can come kick down the door and, and, and hit it with a hammer and take it open and take your servers out. It's now in a location where, you know, it's it's a global redundant um, and, and, you know, meeting HIPAA, HIPAA compliance standards. Uh, so that's, you know, kind of going more into some of the visibility control. You have a lot more tools you can use on, on some of the forefront sides with an exchange where you can do... Uh, you know, archiving rules and searching against those mail accounts and, and, and mailboxes. So SharePoint or uh, SharePoint Online with Loop 365, you got three three basic different options. Um, my sites is going to be more uh, is, is, is an individual user creating their own sites to, to, to share and manage their personal document information. Team sites going to be an area where your users can collaborate on that information and work on it together. Um, and then you can create permissions around that documentation and, and how they access it. And then uh, something that's new with SharePoint Online 2010 is you now have the ability to do an Internet public site from the service as well. And uh, these are all, you know, fairly easy to set up. Um, it does require, you know, some reading. But, uh, you know, diving in and creating just even just a document repository is very easy to do. Uh, that's something we can do a little bit of today inside this demo. And as, as far as the Internet sites go, uh, Microsoft's done a pretty good job of doing a lot of snap-ins in, in place. So where you can see, it, you know, templates to build from, and then you can, you know, take your own images and, and content and upload it from there. Uh, Link Online, uh, another one of the tools that are going to be available within O365, is, is actually what we're using today for this presentation. Uh, we can all, we also use this in our company for, for our main point of communication between between personnel. So it gives us the ability to do uh, IM presence, uh, you know, meetings such as this one, and voice and video to PC, uh, which is what I'm, I'm actually presenting from my local PC and then broadcasting that over our conferencing system. So you do have the ability to actually connect uh, through conferencing providers and, and actually have those numbers built in. So if I send out a meeting invite, users can connect to that and they're, you know, coming in through our conferencing line so we can now have the ability to record and, and manage that data after after a phone call or a business, business meeting. Uh, and Office 2010 is also available. Now, this is this is part of a, you can do this individually as a, as a single license uh, or as part of the, uh, a larger SKU, uh, the E3 SKU, Enterprise Level 3 SKU, which includes the Office Professional Plus. And what this is, it's, uh, it's the same version you would install on your local PC today, except the licensing you're using for this is no longer, you know, something you have to have a, an ID and then activate it with that license ID. This is actually a subscription license. So after you activate Office 2010 on your machine, it, it does this with your, your full email address and password that you use with the O365 service. And then you as a business owner or, or you know, IT manager can, can uh, manage if that user is, able to access anymore, access the Office 2010 license anymore just by, you know, them having a license to your environment. So, for instance, if you terminate an employee, you can easily remove that license. And if they've gone and installed Office 2010 on any home machines, after 30 days, it's no longer going to be active. Um, so, pretty pretty cool. Um, one of the cool features of that as well, it's not just a single license. You actually get uh, licensed for up to five installs per user. So if you have a user with a, a laptop, uh, you know, maybe, a, you know, some kind of a Slate device or, you know, desktop at home, they can install Office on all those machines and still be legally compliant uh, underneath your company licensing. So mobility. Uh, you're really going to see, I uh, mean, Active Sync being used the same as, you know, it is in 2007, 2010 on on-premise environment is into the uh, cloud environment. So you're still connecting over the same uh, methodologies. You can use your auto discover, so all you need is your, your full email address and your password. Put that in on your phone, and it's going to auto-populate your information and, and start to connect just because it's using that same active sync pro protocol. 
Uh, and this works against all environment, all, all platforms, so Windows 7, Android, BlackBerry, iPhone, and then some of the Nokia models. So basically, pretty much any smartphone, you're able to connect and get the uh, a rich, you know, existence with your your desktop and or Outlook Web Access and your mobile phone. So if you have an email, email come into your phone, if you're in a pop environment now, it gets downloaded to your phone and you don't see that on your desktop. Where in this kind of an active sync environment, you're going to see <clears throat> the same experience against all three levels. Uh, so if you read an email in one location, it's going to show up as read in all. If you delete it in one location, it's going to delete it in all three. Well, 365 really provides the best productivity experience against uh, PC, phone, and browser. So, you know, in a browser platform, uh, Internet Explorer, Firefox, Safari, and Chrome, it's all going to work, you know, just as well as, as uh, you know, one or the other. Um, phones, same thing. You're going to, you know, on all platforms, like you've seen in the last slide, it's going to work as well as, uh, you know, between Mac and PC. So, you can be on a web browser accessing your mail in all those browsers or have, you know, Mac mail running or Office 2011 for Mac, and it's still going to connect and be able to get into to, uh, your information that way. And then, you know, the best productivity, or best productivity experience on a PC. Uh, this is really kind of more speaking towards Office 2010 and, and you know, what some new features you're going to be looking at inside this, you know, using the O365 in the environment. Some, some cool thing, new features that are available with Office 2010. Uh, that's available with O365 is uh, conversation history. Uh, so you can, you know, manage your, your your email based on conversation, as well as uh, social news feeds and Outlook uh, snapping directly into your profile. So if you want to connect it to your LinkedIn or Facebook, for that matter, you can do so and, and have that information pop up. Uh, one of the cool features I like is is I can you can open up that uh, social news feed. And you're going to have some options with, within a contact you've, you've been working with. So, like you can see here with this Louise here, uh, you have your home, and you have some conversations. This is something we can look at once we get into the demo a little bit. But any any kind of conversation or communication you've had with a user, you can open that up and find stuff pretty easily. So I use that often if I'm having a conversation by email with somebody. If I'm looking for a previous email that was sent. I can click on that user and then open that up, and I'll see something uh, that was previously you know talked about and I'm trying to find. So that's actually going to take us into our demo. Oh, sorry, I got ahead of myself there. Uh, so best productivity experience on, on uh, Windows 7 phone. And so what this is really speaking to is, is your ability to uh, connect your phone directly to Office 365. So what you can see here is you have two options here. Uh, you've got your documents here and then SharePoint. So documents, these are going to be documents that are actually on your phone. Uh, on Windows Phone 7, you have um, the actual Office Suite read, read, readers installed. So you can actually open up a document and make some edits to it on your phone. Um, if you're using Office 365, you can actually connect it with your, your full username and password to O365, and they'll actually connect to your SharePoint site. And you can have it, uh, you can open up SharePoint site uh, locations and, and, and make edits to documents within SharePoint and save that and have it synchronized back to the cloud. And so any other user in another location can actually see those change that you've made from your mobile device. It's a pretty cool feature. And this next slide just kind of speaks to best productivity experience in the browser. Um, again, this is just showing you that uh, you don't have to be using Internet Explorer for this to work. This is going to be working in all platforms, so IE, Firefox, Safari, and Chrome. Um, you're going to see, you know, Previously, in older versions, maybe if you open something up in Chrome, you'd see some table differences if you're looking like at an Excel file or a web browser. Whereas now, uh, within you know the Exchange 2010, uh, you know Browser 2010, it, it's it's pretty much seamless. There's not a whole lot of differences between the two. All right, now let's go take some more demo. So what I'm going to do here um, is I've logged in. To a web browser at portal.microsoftonline.com with uh, Dan Jump. So Dan Jump is the CEO of his company, and where I'm at here is just the home page, and this is uh, pretty much the landing page for most users. What they're going to see if they log into the web browser, and from within here, if I if I'm going to this for the first time um, and I want to download and install stuff to my local machine, I just click on Downloads over here underneath Resources. 
And this is going to give me access to anything that I have been licensed to by my company. So you can see Dan here has been has been accessed or given granted access to Microsoft Office Professional Plus. Uh, so he can come in here and specify what browser or what you know version he wants to do, whether it be 32 by 64, and then he can specify a language you would like to install that as, and then he just hits install. So that's going to install it on his local machine um, from O365 and once it comes time for him to authenticate and you know and verify ownership, he just provides his full email address and password. And I'll show you uh, once we get into a little bit more of the administration features on this, I can show you where you would specify what you want to license someone for. But Microsoft's made it very easy to control and do that. Uh, next, uh, Microsoft installing Link. He's also been granted access to Link. So all he does is install this from here. Once you get both these installed, he would run the setup. And this goes through and basically creates a an authentication between his local machine and Microsoft. This is actually something that's going to be going away. Um, so all you would do is just install these tools, uh, whether it be you know Link or Office, and then once they're installed, he would, you would basically just get connected and authenticate. Uh, currently today though, um, you, you you just run the setup and it connects it, and then just runs a connector on your local machine and you're good to go. So let's go ahead and we'll jump into Outlook now, uh, Outlook Web Access. And so Dan, you can see that he's available here through the link. Uh, it's kind of a cool feature. One of the one of the big deals here is you can actually, if you have a link applied to you as a license, when you're logged in from a web interface, you can actually still use link. So I can come up here to the top right corner and I can specify what kind of a setting I want Dan to have. So if he's working on something and he doesn't really want to be disturbed, you can switch it to not busy. Or you can say do not disturb. The problem with do not disturb is if you set it as do not disturb, you know, you're no longer you're no longer going to be receiving instant messages from you know your colleagues. So I only use that for instance if I'm in a meeting or something like that and I'm sharing my desktop, I don't want people to interrupt me. I can set it as do not disturb then. But uh, it's kind of a cool feature. That's that's live. So as soon as you can actually see here in the email list, as soon as I make a change to that. It's pretty, pretty instant. It uh, picks that up right inside the, uh, the web browser. So you can see here Karen is, has been away. And I've actually set up Karen on a virtual machine here for testing, or for part for this demo. And all I have to do on her is uh, I can just uh, jump, jump over to my VM here. And I can send a message, message to Dan while he's in the inter interface here, in the web interface. And he's going to get that pop up on his screen that uh, Karen's trying to communicate with them. That looks like I need to log back in. Hold on, what's on my demo here? All right, well, that's doing that. Um, Dan can also do the exact same thing towards Karen. So if he's in the web interface and he wants to chat with Karen, he can just go over here and say chat. So that's going to get sent to Karen, um, and then she can respond, and it'll come right through. Looks like my uh, local client. I was pulled this over so you can see what I'm doing with here. So it looks like my local client on my on my virtual machine is having some problems. I probably just need to restart this. We can we can mess with this, and you know, a little later on. Get this rolling on the back end. We can I can show you this again here in a few minutes. But anyway, uh, the chat session I uh, normally <laughs> works pretty seamlessly. Uh, this is a virtual machine I just set up, so maybe we're just having some some communication problems here. But uh, so the next thing we want to dive into is is just uh, the conversation history here. So like I can I can open up this conversation. You know, open up a few email threads, and you can see the conversation history on on just some some back and forth we've been having. And this isn't a much. You can actually come in here and, and change that back to, you know, full email information if that's what you'd like to read it as, or right back if, if you prefer conversation. So, uh, one cool feature that change that's been made within uh, within the uh, web access for Exchange 2010 is you have the ability to to set and change themes. Uh, some users. I like to mix that up a little bit. And basically, you change that. It's going to show change what, what you're kind of working in. Um, um, as well as you have full access to uh, your your personal options. So I can come into whoops. 
I can come in and um, create rules or out of office settings directly from Outlook Web Access. I can also see connected accounts, like what the what accounts are connected to this this profile, uh, if any. Another cool feature is phones. So if I have a mobile phone that's connected to my Outlook Web Access, I can actually see that in here and see when the last time it's been communicating with the service, as well as I can do remote wipes from that. So if I have if I happen to lose my phone or it's stolen, I can actually uh, I can actually come into the web interface and, and actually do remote wipes on those devices. So let's go back to uh, mail here. We'll go to your team site. All right, so this is Dan's company. This is a Contoso Corporate website, or, or internet site, or SharePoint site. Um, and within here, he's got all their company documentation, and, and uh, we got sales here with a bunch of the documentation. And, you know, they got some uh, video plan feeds coming through. They got some document, you know, uh, Sales by region uh, chart and images that are coming based off of the information they have in here. I can come in here and you can see this this document right here is actually checked out by Dan. So I can actually, if if, if another user was using this document, we could uh, select that and we could force them to check it back in, or we could just hit the checkbox here and we can control that back up here as well. So let's do that. We'll go ahead and check this document in. So once that document's checked in, uh, users, on, you know, other users within, within the company can actually come in easily and check this document back out or make edits to it within the browser. So let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and open this. That's one financial analysis. And we're going to say edit in the browser. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to log in with Karen on my other machine here. All right, so we're in sales. <laughs> All right, so now I can say edit in browser in this profile as well. And now you can see uh, we're in the same document here. I'll just pull my virtual machine back out of the way. If I go down to the bottom right, you can see that there's two people when you're editing this document. So I'll go ahead and I can be in here looking at data. At the same time, somebody's on the same, same system, and they can be making changes to that. And that's going to be a live change. So if somebody makes a change to that, you can see here, on this side, underneath the sum of unit price, Karen's going through and she's actually highlighting information. So, uh, say you know she's working on something and or trying to talk about you know a specific cell number or whatever, and explaining it to Dan over a conversation, and they can be looking at the same document as she's making changes. And then as she makes those changes, they're just going to show up over here on Dan's side. So I've just gone ahead and let me just go ahead and hyper select a few of them and I'll just uh, highlight them. And soon after, there you go. As soon as she makes that change, that goes ahead and hi highlights the entire column. So pretty cool feature. This 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 allows you to work on a document together, um, and you to do it. You could do this through a link conversation and actually share the document that way as you're both working on it, or you know just over a phone call or just know what each other is supposed to be working on and 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 you know see those changes happen. Another cool feature is you can actually lock strings of data down. So for instance, if you're doing this in like a Word document. You can you can highlight a selected group of information and you can lock that and and uh, if anybody else is is coming into that document 
and working on it, uh, they can see that that's locked up by, you know, Karen or Dan, um, and then you can, you know, because they're in there changing it, you don't want somebody changing the same text that you're currently working on. So pretty cool feature. You can come in and actually gain access to do that, that, that kind of thing, and, and uh, you know, still, still uh, be within the doc same document but not editing the exact same information at the same time. So I'm going to see if I can get to Dan now. See if we can test that chat session here and go back into Outlook Web Access. There we go. So now Karen's available. So I just went ahead and I reboot uh, that session. So I must have had a, a problem. So I'll go ahead and just open up the chat. So now I can see Karen's available. And then she receives it on her side and then comes straight through. So now if uh, Karen at any point changes her status, uh, you're going to see that show up in live time. So if all of a sudden she has a meeting show up, uh, it's going to switch to busy and, or, you know, in a meeting, and, and we've already seen that right here in the web browser. So she's showing up as busy now. Um, now this is actually going to be coming from her calendar. So this is free busy information based off of what her current calendar status is. So if we're chatting, and then I send her a message, and I know she hasn't responded for a little while, I can look up and I can see, oh, she's in a meeting, she, or she's on a conference call, whatever. And, it's, and, I, and I can look and see that that's, you know, something that's actually being pulled out of her actual uh, calendar. So, pretty cool feature. You can actually, uh, let me, I'll actually drag my virtual machine back over here. Now, we were looking at Dan from the web, web interface, uh, so you don't have as many functions, you know, as many functions you can do as, as far as interacting with another user. So, if I actually go ahead and open up Dan here, right click him, I can send him an instant message, I can call him, I can start a video conference, I can send him an email. Um, so if I just specify that, it's actually going to connect to my Outlook profile, and it's going to email them directly, you know, from my Outlook client. Uh, so it's pretty cool. It's, you know, there's a lot of things you can use that for. We actually, inside of our company, we can actually, we'll start communication with somebody, and we can drop and drag documentation. So if we're working on the same same document, maybe it's not in SharePoint yet, we can drag and drop it to through the chat session, and that actually transfers it to that user over to secure protocols. So it's all over 443. And uh, so it's a uh, pretty cool functionality there. So another thing I want to show you, as long as I'm in Karen's machine here and inside the SharePoint page, is what we'll do is, you know, say Karen's constantly in the SharePoint site, and she works in computer management within Windows and Tune on the IT team, and she wants to have access to, do, to this site. And so what we're going to do is we can come into this, from a folder level, let's see here. I need to do it from a folder level though, so let's go back to let's do it from I'm gonna, what I'm doing here is I'm trying to find a folder I that I can actually map. So here we go. Here's this one. I have just something I want, so you can still see it in this screen here. I can do it from a top level, but I prefer to do it from, from a document level just so you can see the, what it looks like from the snap in. So what I'm going to do is uh, Karen's constantly in here working on, on the information inside of this document. So I'm just going to click on it, and I can say connect to my Outlook profile. And what that does is it says, hey, are you sure you want to connect this? Uh, you want to allow Microsoft access to your Outlook. So if you say allow and you apply this, this actually connects that SharePoint site directly and all the documents within that, within, in that folder directly into Outlook into uh, Karen's Outlook profile. So you can see here if I actually open up that financial analysis document, it's the actual document that we were editing. So I... Now, we hadn't saved any of those changes we made, so I can actually come in here and I can say, you know what, let's go ahead and edit offline. And then it's just telling us, we'll make sure we, we trust the site this is coming from, so we'll say okay. And I can actually go through and I can clear, clear this up and say, you know what, I don't want all these highlights over this document, let's go ahead and clean these. And then I can say, okay, file, save as. 
back to financial analysis. All right. Cool. So now that's, that document's been uploaded back into SharePoint, and the changes have been made, and it's cleaned up again. So pretty cool. You, you don't actually have to log into SharePoint to actually get access to those documents. Another thing you can do is you can actually go into your, uh, you know, my computer, and you can actually map a drive to the SharePoint location. So you don't necessarily have to log in from a web interface to gain access to those documents. So if you want to do it from your local desktop or you want to do it directly from Outlook connecting to your profile that way, it's still something you can gain access to when you have that functionality. So real quick, let's go ahead and I'm going to jump back to Dan. Here, Dan's an actual administrator into his company. So we'll go ahead and let's jump home. And now since Dan is an administrator, um, he has this admin tab at the top of his, his, his portal. Row 365. Uh, any other user that's not an admin won't have this tab. So we'll go ahead and just click on admin. And now we're in the, the, basically the main, you know, login page for an admin. So, uh, Dan being an admin, anytime he logs into portal.microsoftonline.com, it's going to land him right in here at the admin page. If any other, you know, general user logs in, they're going to come into the home page and then they specify where they want to go from there. Um, so, as far as managing admins, uh, so we'll, well, let's take a step back here. Let's go. So within O365, um, if you're trying to manage any aspect of the, of the service, as far as users, security groups, domains, it's all going to be underneath here. Subscriptions, uh, support, it's all been broken down into different categories. So it's pretty easy and pretty uh, pretty intuitive to, to, to navigate. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and go to users, and we're going to take a look at you know, we can reset a password, we can change an account uh, login name, and that kind of functionality from this page. This is really where you're going to add new users, remove users, um, and just do basic user management. Uh, this is also where you're going to specify permissions. And pr previously, uh, I talked about where you're going to control what licenses a user has and what they have access to. Uh, this is where you're going to do that. So if you had uh, more than just an E3 plan that you were assigning licensing for, you would see a breakdown of licensing. So maybe you have, you know, E3 and then maybe, you know, 20 Exchange Online only licenses. You can actually come in here and you would specify just by hitting that checkbox uh, who, what license a user is going to get. So um, if you don't want those users to have access to maybe Link or, you know, even SharePoint, you can uncheck those from that license and save that against the account. And... And there, there you go. So now Aaron's been create, you know, has been applied a license, uh, and all he's going to have access to is Office Professional Plus and Exchange. So all he can do is receive mail and download uh, the Office Pro Professional Plus license to or, um, install on his local machine. So now, as far as being a, you know, an Exchange user, and these users are going to you're going to have distribution groups, you're going to have con external contacts to your company, and you're going to have aliases underneath accounts. That's all stuff you can still manage. And just because you're moving to a cloud service doesn't mean that that stuff's going to go away. You would just access that by, you know, managing Exchange. So what we'll do is we'll click on Manage underneath Exchange underneath Microsoft Office 365. And from within here, you're going to see any mailboxes that are created in your environment. So we just, you know, we just apply our license to Aaron. So let's go ahead and open Aaron up. And now we see all of Aaron's settings. So I can come in here and I can say, okay, what's, what's Aaron's mailbox usage? Okay, he's only using a very small amount of his mail. He's got a 25 gig mailbox. Maybe I want to specify how large his mailbox is. I can come in and control all those settings from within here. So maybe you only want users to have a 10 gig mailbox at first. And then if I, you know, maybe you want them to make sure their, their mail is, you know, tidy. Uh, so you don't want them to just t kind of just keep stuff until, it, you know, forever. Essentially, so you can you can kind of uh, come in here and create kind of rules or, or manage those kind of settings within here. Another thing you can do from this screen is uh, we can give an, another alias to Aaron. So maybe uh, you want to add uh, Aaron, you know, A for you know his first name and you know and Painter. So A Painter for his email address. You just go ahead and say okay, and that's applied that to his account, or maybe you know just Aaron or AP, you know. So you can go ahead and add as many aliases to an account as you need. Again, the only thing Microsoft is ever going to charge you for is an account that sends mail out. 
So, uh, you know, accounts receiving mail, if you have a license or if it's a, just a distribution group, those aren't going to cost you anything extra as well as contacts. Those are all, you know, you, as many as you need um, to, to, to get the job done, essentially. So uh, distribution groups, we have just an HR, and, you know, hrdomain.com. I can come in here easily and I can say, okay, I want, uh, you know, we have Karen and Dan in here receiving mail at this, <clears throat> at this distribution group currently. I can come in here and I can say, okay, let's add some more members. And I can say, okay, let's add Dan, Eric, and Jay, Jeff. Say okay. And then I just go ahead and added those users and say save. So it's pretty easy to come in and actually manage this information as well. Um, as well as creating new groups, it's just as easy. You come in here and say we want a group that's for sales. Um, call it what it is. Dan, because he's, Dan is the one that's in here creating this group, it's automatically going to be the group owner. Uh, we'll come in here and say membership. You know, maybe I don't want Dan to receive email from this group, so I'll just say, you know what, let's not add Dan as the owner to the group. And let's go ahead and just add a couple members in here. So let's select a few, say OK, and save. That's pretty much it. So group management is very easy. Um, you know, essentially the same thing as uh, external contacts. You want to add, you know, external contacts to environments the same same way. Uh, email aliases on any user accounts. I've worked through that. You also have uh, forefront filtration services that come with O365. So to get to that, you just come into Mail Control and you say Configure IP Safe Listing, and this is going to come into a page where you have the ability to. I'd actually have to log back in to get into that, but basically. If you if you want to go in and, and, and whitelist the domain or blacklist domains that are, are spam in your environment, that's where you can go in and manage that kind of information. So that's pretty quick and dirty um, demo on on O365. I think what I'll do now is take it back to the to the main page here and then open it up for, for questions and hand it back to Mike. Hey Jade, thanks. Um, this is Mike again. Um, that's going to, that brings us to the end of the webinar, and we hope you enjoyed learning about both Windows 8 and Office 365. We do have some time for questions now. We have Chris and Jay both here. Um, if anyone on the call would like to ask a question, please go ahead and use the link um, chat feature in the uh, corner there, and um, we'll go ahead and answer any of those as they come in. Um, looks like a question is coming in now, maybe. Uh, Greater asks, will you be posting this webinar for download? Um, yes, uh, we are. I believe we've recorded the webinar, and we'll be putting it um, on our website. Our website is infiniteconsulting.com, uh, and we'll have it linked there, probably in the blog. No problem. Thanks. Thanks for coming. Um, I think if you advance the deck, Jade, there's a slide about um, some promos that we have with Office 365. Now's a really great time to um, sign up. There's, um, uh, I think, a couple of different offers on the table. This is just one of them, the big easy offer, um, where you'll get a significant um, amount of money back depending on the number of um, seats that you sign up for and the plan you sign up for. You can get thousands of dollars back to spend on additional um, consulting or migration or um, services. Um, so if that's something that you're interested in, please um, get in touch with us and we can go over all of the promotions that are available. Any other questions from any of the attendees? Okay, well, thank you, everyone, for joining. That will uh, conclude the webinar. And, yes, we'll be posting this online from our website. If you have any questions or would like to learn more about either Windows 8 or um, Office 365, please do get in touch with us. Um, we're at infiniteconsulting.com, um, or you can email us at info at infiniteconsulting.com. Thanks, and uh, have a great day.